Hello, and welcome back to another very special edition of This Old Dune Buggy. We had a really good time the other day making a gas tank mount. We filmed the whole thing. It was looking good, and then we realized someone didn't press the play button, or the record button, rather. So we made some progress. It was probably a gremlin. <laughs> so anyway, we have some progress done. We're using this 5 8 inch square tube. And what I created in a magnificent episode that no one will ever see <laughs> is a magic mirror. And I could see you, Johnny, Wayne, Bill, Bart, Sarah, Susan, and Carol, too. Thank you for coming this afternoon to watch us mount this gas tank should be pretty special old school vw i like it fits the theme made this hoop that nests the gas tank in it it's a little tight because i want that thing to pop in there and stay a couple little clamps in the end what we have to do now is mount it to the chassis the old setup had these mounts here. Oh no, oh no. I'm getting used to my gimbal. Ah. <laughs> now, follow along. It's going to be fast and furious. So somebody welded some square steel tube there. Sort of like that other roll cage mount. I just cut it off. I still haven't finished welded anything because I'm like that. But we're going to set this right in there and create another perch for the gas tank. All right, so to do that, I'm just going to lay this across and kind of figure out what the height of this thing is going to be. I'll put this gas tank into its nest. Just get a little squeeze on this. Oh, I'll get this kind of pushed into place. So, like so. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, cool. You see, that thing is in there. They're like, they're like partners at this point. So uh, our fuel comes out of here. I'm assuming this works. I don't know. If it doesn't, I'm gonna figure out a way to just angle out. This is the old school way. This came through the VW bug body under the dashboard. So to turn your gas off, you'd reach under the dashboard and give that a spin. That's old school. Maybe I'll use it if it works, maybe I won't. Either way, fuel comes out of the bottom. I'm gonna put the cap in the back, kind of the opposite of what the VW Bug had. It had the cap in the front. But you could see that that's set up. That's with the fuel outlet hitting the transaxle. So we're gonna have to raise this mount up a smidge. Now, there's a lot of ways you could go about doing that. How are you going to go about doing that? <laughs> I don't know. Any suggestions? How would you go about doing this? To lower the mount? We have to fill in this space, see? we got to bring this tube up to here somehow. More metal? More metal. <laughs> Always more metal. That's the answer. <laughs> or we could use the same amount of metal and bend it. Yeah. I like bending it better than using more metal. Yeah, that's fine. Let's discuss, shall we? We're going to find the center of this tube of my bobber, and then we're going to center the gas tank. When I say tube of a bobber, that is the clinical term. Very That's what technical. all professionals use. Got four inches on that side, five inches on that side. Coming over a half inch. Got four and a half. Yeah, four and whatever. Looks good to me. Now we're gonna measure across these things, her. 
we got about 40, well, 39 and a half. So roughly 20 right there. You can see how technically accurate I am with all these measurements. It's super important. That looks about right. We're gonna call that the middle. All right, things are heating up. I'm feeling better already. It's winter, it is colder than a witch's tortilla out there. And when you know that term is used, you know it's cold. So we got the center, and I'm thinking this tank is about 30 inches. We'll take our center mark, and we'll make marks at 30 and at zero. Why? Because if the tank was sitting in its own custom-built nest, and it was this wide, you would want the little bends to grow out from there, right? I mean, wouldn't you? The classic Art Deco waterfall effect. Science. So what we didn't show, because someone didn't press record, <laughs> was my modified tubing bender. I'm not mentioning any names. I think there's a lot more behind the scenes. Those gremlins. <laughs> we did catch a mouse on the, on the, uh, on yeah. the security camera. On the security camera. <laughs> it's crazy what these things will pick up. Oh, there I am. Three dimensional. <laughs> yeah. Security cameras everywhere. We're not only a little paranoid. Everywhere. We're just secure. <laughs> Can't be too careful out in these wastelands. So, the bender is for a one inch square tube, and we're using five eighths. So that means it ain't gonna work, or is it? What I did was uh, just centered this tube in the larger one inch notch. Got my mark set in there. I center it, and then I'm just gonna take a big old clamp. Usually there's like a little retaining ring that goes around it. But because it's the wrong size tube, it ain't gonna work. So let me adjust this a little bit. Everything's centered. I put one clamp there. I'm gonna grab a vice grip and do the other part of the equation. When this bender's bending, it pulls the tube through the dies. So it's putting a lot of pressure on this point and it wants to pull the tube backwards, even though it's coming around, the tube wants to slide that way. So it's locked for moving with this clamp and locked from further moving with that clamp. Anyway, I digress. I'm just gonna make a little mark on this. There is this calibrated dial thing, but I don't have the little arrow that follows it. So what I do a lot is I'll just make a mark on the tool as the arm comes around, I'll make a mark where it stops. And then you got kind of a clock. You got a little, a little repeatable point of reference. Let me sharpen my chalk. After I plug in the tool. All right. Same bender I used in the roll cage. Different dies for square tube. Let's begin, shall we? Now I'm just gonna eyeball this because I saw it's gotta come up about that much. So I'm gonna bend it about that much in technical terms. I'm gonna put a mark on this as a starting point, right? And when I say clock, watch, you're gonna see it spin around the dial. Where are we? Lock, lock, lock. Yes, let's go. Now what I'm looking at is the tube is here at this plane and I'm thinking we want to raise it up, right? So look, this is, in the end you'll see it's getting physically taller in the way we're going to orient it. So I like that. We're going to say, we're going to stop it when it comes right to that point. One thing I know about this bender, 
as I almost broke it the other day, because this die tends to fall a little bit. There it is. It's not a perfect world. There we go. Now set that back into place. I'm letting it go. That's it. That's as much as we're bending it. So I'm going to flip this now and do the other side. Right. I think you were the voice of the entire audience there. Yeah, that's all I want to ask. Why was it going backwards? <laughs> In order to go forward, sometimes you must go backwards. go backwards. So we got our points of benditure on there. I'm going to flip this thing. See? Now your gas tank's up here. It's going down to the mounts. Same thing. Got my mark at 15. Let me flip that to this side. That, uh huh. Mm hmm. Like a cooking show. hmm? I think like we're doing like a cooking show. This is exactly like a cooking show. It smells like chicken. I'm going to put that on that same reference I used for the other bend. Clamp it like Jed. One more. All right, we're looking at the two points. You got point A. Swipe that. We're going for point B. Prepare to bend. Preparing. Let that little puppy swing around the dial. For the bends around the gas tank, I just let this pull all the way to a full 90 degree bend. For this one, it looks like about that many degrees. About how many degrees it is outside right now. <laughs> Not many. That many <laughs> all right, so again, the bender without the dial gauge. Not a perfect world. So I'm going to lay these on the table, figure out which one's which, because they're probably not perfect. Well, you never know all about the operator how i do that so i'll just use this piece of sheet metal as a reference right because you got just because it's here you set that flat parallel with the edge of the sheet metal and just whoa without moving it <laughs> put a little magic marker on there a little ring a ding same gig on this side see that this one is a little bit more bent. So I'm going to err on the side of being a little more bent than a little less bent. We got that one. Yeah, look at this. The more bent one is there. Whoosh. Voila. Close enough little if this was heavier tube you'd put it back in the tool and set it but that's good enough for government work <laughs> always with the jokes that guy look it's higher than it were that is truly amazing good job thank you thank you <laughs> please hold your applause hold your applause till later <laughs> Actually, I think, I think with our new editing tool, we just got a new computer to hold all this precious content. And you got to hear the story about this. <laughs> I may have busted an international theft ring. Theft ring on accident. We just happened. <laughs> we ordered our computer online. And something in the computer world changed the address somewhere in that matrix it changed the address to a just regular fedex to use the term uh facility instead of delivering to our house so someone went to the facility signed their name, their name so not and so even not even jamie's name and got a fifteen hundred dollar laptop computer they got to be doing this like all over the but place then what happened? mrs sleuth called the police rectified that situation yeah, they called FedEx.
called the FedEx. Talked to my homegirl in Lancaster. Went through the channels, and I think they're onto something. They're doing this. They tried to steal the next one. Yeah. Jamie was reimbursed another computer, like, within hours. It was on its way. And, I, and they tried to steal it. The computer changed the address again. They tried to steal it, but I was two steps ahead. Jamie woke up at 5 a.m., figured Apple. out, called all the authorities, and we got a computer. <laughs> More content, guys. That's what our holdup has been. <laughs> what an amazing story. All right, so this is 12 inches off of each frame horn now, so that means it is fairly level. I'm just going to cut these ends off like so. I'm sure you really love the sound of my teeth gnashing on this magic marker. Maybe I'm going to change up my tactic. I'm going to cut both of those. Ready for your PPE, my dear? She's got all hands on deck, so it's up to me to put on the protection. Right. Here, here, let me get that for you. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. So, prepare to cut. We got our line. So, what I'm thinking is you might want to stay parallel with this if you're laying it on a level surface, but I got a plan. I'm going perpendicular to the cross line. this back in place and it should just nest right in between <sighs> look at that perfect just set it like that look at that you got a great spot to weld it just set right inside that larger tube i'm gonna blast this into place we'll carry on you could see how now if it was straight across it would be lower with these two little bends is bends oh, ah it's science so satisfying, yet so simple. <laughs> All right, get a little ground clamp on this. There's absolutely no fuel in that tank. Nobody to be alarmed. It's been dry for decades. Otherwise, you wouldn't want a gas tank around your welder. Just saying. It's a little common sense for you. Always think about that stuff. Safety first. Acetone, uh, car battery. The, uh, the spark I've seen land on a car battery and poof, pops acid everywhere. Man, was that a trip. Catch that joke. It's all funny. Huh? Oh, yeah. I'll close up the ends later. I'm just demonstrating how I'm going to assemble this. All the finished work will happen later. So that's the boring part. The fun part is in the inspiration and the action. That's why there's no such thing as the... Maybe there is the YouTube block sanding channel. Today we're gonna block sand, today we're gonna block sand a 12 foot van side and make it perfectly smooth. Let me take out my PP. Always with the PP. Live a little, come on. <laughs> Get loose with your bad self. All right, so we got that. Turn this off for sound. You could see. There's a little clamp that'll stay right where I want it. Hmm? Yes, the little camera accessories. <laughs> yeah, that was news. 
yeah, we're going to the Spokane Speed and Custom Show, and the fella who puts it on, his son, had one of these little cell phone camera holders. And man, it's neat. All right, so that looks reasonably centered. It doesn't have to be 100% because we're not committing yet. See the gas tank still laying on the transaxle, but we're going to approach that issue right after this brief word from our vice grips. If I can get this thing clamped. There it is. All right. So now I'm thinking if we were to come straight across. Ooh. Mash is giving me a little reinforcement too. <laughs> Oops. Not as petite and light as I used to be. So now we're pre approaching almost the same scenario. A straight shot here ain't going to reach that tank. But if we do that same hustle we just accomplished, we can come in and this can go up or down or in or out any old way. But we got 37 and a half on the outside this next cross member I'm gonna use that same bend as a reference we're gonna go 30 inches between the bends see what happens <laughs> can't wait so we got our layout here we'll do the 15 and 15 trick on each side because you know what that adds up to 30 that's right. Yeah. Because math. Because math. All right. We got that and that. Back to the bender. Take off my gloves. Getting all warmed up. Getting all heated. Hey, here's the thing. I'm looking for a uh, one-ton Chevy truck, 4x4. Four four. I just need the chassis. It's an independent front suspension four-wheel drive so there's a center differential independent axle so you could put airbags on it really easy i'm looking for one just the chassis the front clip anybody holding let me know i got this idea this next project it's gonna be dope it's gonna be pretty rad but firstly i need the parts <laughs> Where it all starts. We pull it backwards to go forwards, as we learned. Check. Come around this piece. Got that closed. Our line goes right to this certain reference point on a bender that is secret to everyone. That is currently viewing this because camera can't register it, but I know. Here we go, bending. Again, got our little clock. It's going around 637, 8. Wait for it. Ding. Ah, I see. Coming back. How much time we at? You got any register on that? We did a little uh, timer session in the last episode and forgot to put it back on. I try not to make this a long drawn out affair. As much as you all want to stay and have a slumber party, etc. Trying to keep the content to the point, moving along fairly well paced. Yeah, See, I can always cut it in half. Now okay. know how to do it. Well, seeing that we're at 20 minutes, I guess uh, you see what we're up to. The suspense is thick. I mean, <laughs> we are getting into this now. Whew. So, I'm going to make one more bend. We'll be back soon. Something is going wrong. Get that clamp back a little bit further. Oh, 
All right, so we're back from that exciting last portion. We're getting this bend done. I keep messing this bender up. I'm gonna break this die. Break the die, be a mess Well, see, it falls down a little bit. Mm -hmm. This is for the other bender I gave to my friend Alan. And I was like, nah, I got it, bro. I'll use the nice hydraulic one, but I didn't realize that this is a little bit different dimension. All right, so there we are. Shut that off. And here we are, right back in the game. That gas tank is right where we left it. It's halfway mounted. So you made it like 25 minutes. That's just me talking. So we're at like 25 minutes. That's just her talking. <laughs> so we're just going to check these two bends and see which one I like better. I made one a little tighter because now we have a different uh, thing to consider. Not only are we coming back to the tank mount off the roll bar, but we're going to be raising it up and down. So it's on an angle. As we raise it, it's going to kind of change everything. I'm going to do the little trick I did before. A little marker on there. Edges are parallel. I'm going to just make two references. One of the hard bend. So see, this bend is identical to the ones we used on the front tank. So let's just put it in place and see what looks best. So now, yeah, see that? That's just about perfect. And that is the harsher bend. All right, so we're there. So I'm gonna pull this one a little bit tighter and we're just gonna go straight back with it. They're really close at this point and the tube is thin walled. So for me to match those bends up, gonna give it a little action yeah see we're getting close am I right that is there and then that that's at the highest one so we want to bring that up more give it a little push on there if you push this too hard, it's going to kink. We discussed that in the last video. You like to put the metal in a constricted holding pattern as you're bending it. You tell it what to do. Otherwise, it just gets all wonky on you. All right. See that? That is just about... So what I'm going to do is mark this to slide in, but once I slide this in, it's going to be behind this, so then I'll just take these two bends and relax them just a little bit to get it right where I want it. Coming in with the muffs. I must <laughs> It's a non-commercial venture. Thank you. This is for free. Talking about all that ad space. This is where uh, just a little freeform thinking on this. I don't know how much less it should be bent, but I'm just going to push it until about that's what it feels like. I'm going to come in a little bit closer. You can see my vice is getting loose. Put a block under this. I'm going to have to tighten that thing one of these decades. <laughs> it's been loose for like. 20 years still hasn't fall off the bench still hasn't fell off the bench so all right let's put it in here see what's happening all right so 
so we are darn close at this point. Just a little more trim on this. We'll go right in. <laughs> I know there's a lot of that on and off. That's what I love about these, though. But without it, you get one spark in your eye. You don't know the misery. Unless you know. Capital M for misery. Right. See how this looks. not to like about that. That looks good. One little trim on this one. See, I just did that one side. You hit this. Gotta do this side. Uh, still got your gear. All right. On with the gloves this thing in. So what I'm going to do is uh, just clamp it in place and then I'm going to tap it up because remember the fuel filler is still resting on the transaxle. You ain't got no time for that. So this is one of those instances where if you're of the male persuasion having certain issues between your legs you don't want to catch on fire you're going to think real hard about when you weld this way some call it the welder's tuck some call it the hail mary it depends how you want to do it really a little something out of the way of harm you know what i'm going to take that bend back a little bit more because I'm a perfectionist like that. <clears throat> See? Oh boy. Yeah, there it is. Do it. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So, um, clamp this. Then I'm going to lift this whole assembly up a bit. Like so, that takes the uh, fuel line off of the other metal parts. I hit this right here. Welding. This is a thin wall tube. I'm welding it to a heavy wall. So I put the welding arc on the heavier material and then bring the bead onto the thinner material so that not only fills that small gap we had, but if you put this amount of heat into the small tube, it could cause it to just uh, burn a hole in it if you held it too long. So it was a nice, Kind of a raised bead weld, it looks pretty. And it's controllable. All right, now that we got that, it's gonna come in here. Do another little clamp. the thing with metal it's all leverage if it doesn't do what you want get a bigger tool force it oops that went easy 
hit this. As I mentioned, you do not want that spark falling on your lap. I'll give you a wake up call to remember. Hot potato. So I'm not really worried about uh, getting this like 100% perfect, perfect, because the seats are gonna block all this. Excuse me while I pistol whip the camera with my welder. because I used the welding, I mean, I used the bending dies for a different size tube. The bends aren't like perfect as the roll cage bends are, but you know, this little difference in parallelity doesn't bug me. Seats are gonna be in the way and this is super strong. probably finish this up with just a series of about two inch spot welds and that'll finish it off um, depending on how strong you needed this thing you could come in with other gussets etc I'm pretty confident that this thing is gonna have maybe five gallons of fuel in it because it's gonna be bouncing around so much you don't want 10 12 gallons in there while you're launching up and down with the fuel cap right behind your head that's the learning curve of the old school buggies this is not a fuel cell <laughs> so there will be fumes there will be a bit of splash before i forget let me tack weld this backside. we're almost out the door on this one that was almost too easy again no fuel in the tank absolutely dry please if you're gonna work like this that's a whole kind of misery if you get that thing exploding in your face you don't want that I don't want that for you either So, uh, look at that. We got a fuel tank mount. So, this was some kind of race car going off eight foot jumps. That tank has a lot of weight to it. It's going to be sloshing. You would gusset the heck out of all this business. But I think that this double tube here offers a ton of support. For this tank to just rip those mounts or fatigue them, for the way we're riding this thing, I just don't see that happening. Looks really simple, really clean. It's gonna work. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Now we're gonna take the afternoon off. Tune in again next time, will you? <laughs>